recently, I got a chance to look at the Dell Inspiron 16 Plus 7620, a follow-up to a very popular 16-inch laptop from last year, and I really like this new iteration. But Dell sent over the smaller version, the Dell Inspiron 14 Plus 7420, for those that don't want the bigger display, want something a little bit more portable, but also packs a punch, you're gonna wanna check this one out. This is running a Core i7 12700H processor. That's a really nice processor, especially for a 14 inch laptop. It also has the RTX 3050 GPU, giving a little bit extra graphics horsepower. So this is gonna be a little portable powerhouse you could take with you on the go. Throw in a nice 2.5K display, and now we're talking. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Dell Inspiron 14 Plus 7420, all new for 2022, coming up. Now, before we get to the unboxing, I want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Dell. I'm not being sponsored by Dell. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Dell is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from Dell, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Pricing starts at $12.99 US. Price as tested with my review unit, $14.49.99. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. Now you can get this in two different colors, the dark green or the platinum silver, but I didn't see the platinum silver as an option over at Dell's website. The only one available right now is the dark green and it's a really nice looking color. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. You get some documentation. You also get a 130 watt power adapter to barrel pin connection, and you also get the extension cord as well. And of course you get the unit itself and holding it for the first time, I'm really loving this dark green. Now we already saw this in its bigger sibling, the Inspiron 16 Plus, the 7620 that I recently reviewed. And then those that didn't see it, I'll leave a link in the description below for those who wanna check it out. But it really feels premium, it feels high end. And at 1.68 kilograms or 3.7 pounds, definitely portable for a 14 inch laptop. And of course this certainly packs a punch under the hood. We'll get into the performance numbers in a little bit. Now, to get an idea for its size, here it is next to the Inspiron 16 Plus. And if you want something a little bit more portable, obviously more lightweight with a smaller footprint, go with the 14. But if you want something with a little bit more screen real estate, it does weigh a little bit more, but it gives you the extra screen to work with, especially for creative work, then of course go with the 16. So you have some options here, and I think they're both good ones. Okay, let's check out the port selection. We're gonna start off on the left side where you get your power jack, some venting for cooling. Next to that is an HDMI 2.0 port. Next to that, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A port. Next to that is a USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port that is full function. It supports data charge and display out. And yes, I did test it. It does support charge. So you can use that in addition to the power jack, of course. And moving over to the right side is your 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Next to that is a micro SD card reader, some more venting for cooling, another USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A port that rounds out the ports on this laptop and would say all in all, pretty decent port selection. Now to get inside this laptop, it's actually pretty easy. There are seven Phillips head screws, two of which on the top are going to be captive. The rest you need to remove. Use a guitar pick or a pry tool, of course, to get off that bottom plate. Then, of course, pry it off. That's it. It's pretty easy. Now, once inside, you'll notice that there are two fans for cooling. We'll get into the thermal surface temperatures and fan noise a little bit later in this review. You'll also notice that it has a 64 watt hour battery. We'll get into the battery life and charging times as well later on. Now, the SS SSD is user replaceable and it's covered by a copper plate, which is good. And as you can see from these reads and writes, these are Gen 3 speeds, not the faster Gen 4, although this chipset does support it. So if you want to add a Gen 4 SSD, you have that option. And I love the fact that this is user replaceable. So if your storage needs change down the road, you need more storage, you could swap it out. 
Now, when it comes to the RAM, there are eight gigabytes that are soldered into the motherboard with one slot open for an additional RAM to be put in by the user for a total of 16 on my review unit. Now, this is DDR5 RAM, 4,800 megahertz, and it is running in dual channel mode as is presently constructed. It also has Wi-Fi 6E along with Bluetooth 5.2. Now that card is slotted in, which can be swapped out later on. It's not soldered in. We like to see that. That's good. And both are working as expected, both working flawlessly so far in my testing with this unit. Good job on that front. And as I mentioned earlier, this has a 64 watt hour battery and it did 10 hours and 37 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. So what does that mean in real world mixed usage? This is a seven to eight hour device, depending on what you're doing. Of course, everybody's use case, a little bit different, so your mileage may vary. And it takes about an hour and 45 minutes to fully charge with the 130 watt barrel pin connector adapter included in the box. Okay, let's talk about the display and we have one option here and it's a good one. It's a 14 inch 2.2K display with a resolution of 2240 by 1400. And yes, that is a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. Now it also has an anti-glare coating on it, which helps reduce the glare, but not totally. Certain lighting conditions, we'll notice some glare and reflection. So that's something to bear in mind. Now they claim 300 nits in terms of the brightness. I actually measured above that 312 nits, which is even better. But of course I'd like to see 400 nits and above but 312 nits is actually pretty good on this display. It's certainly bright enough for indoor use and even outdoor use in certain lighting conditions, as I mentioned earlier. Now, as far as the blacks, they're deep blacks, the good contrast, the good white point on this, it's all there. It also has pretty good color accuracy with a 1.21 Delta E score. Remember, anything below two means it's a color accurate display. This doesn't disappoint and it has decent coverage of the color gamut. So if you're going to do things like Photoshop, Lightroom, video editing, color grading, it's a decent choice. I've seen better out there, but this certainly will get the job done. And as I mentioned, this is a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. So this is gonna be good for productivity, Microsoft Office, spreadsheets, Excel documents. This is gonna be great for doing less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. So you'll see more on the display, I like that. And watching Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, and movies in general have been great on this panel. I have no complaints, of course. This being an IPS display, you get excellent viewing angles. And for those wondering, this is a non-touch display. There is no touch option. There's also no OLED option. That would have been a nice way to go. And there is no higher refresh rate option. You're stuck with 60 Hertz here. But of course, at this price point, I'm not gonna complain. This is a solid choice, especially for getting work done and consuming media. It's a nice blend between the two. And I didn't notice any PWM or pulse width modulation or otherwise known as screen flickering, which causes people to get some headaches and stuff like that, not detected on this panel, that's good. And for those on the fence deciding whether to buy the 16 plus or this 14 plus, this is what the two screens look like side by side in terms of the screen difference in terms of that size. So if you need that screen real estate, my recommendation is go with the 16 plus, but if you want something a little bit more portable, obviously the 14 plus might be the choice. Again, the decision's up to you, but you cannot go wrong in either one. Both are very good displays. So this is the front facing camera on the Dell Inspiron 14 plus the 7420. Uh, here for 2022 a lot of improvements here but one of the big improvements will be the camera it's now a full HD camera up from the 720p and uh, what do you think about the video quality what do you think about the audio quality of the mics now there is a shutter switch on the camera itself to give you more security and privacy I like that and the power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner so locking in was wor worked well and as far as the windows hello and it was easy to set up now as far as this camera it's not an IR camera so you cannot log in with face recognition for those wondering but overall I think it's an improvement what do you think let me know in the comments section below and for those of you wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. Good job on the hinges, nice sturdy hinges, very little screen wobble on this, nice job on that front. Now, as far as the keyboard itself is concerned, I like the tactility, I like the key travel, and I thought it was comfortable to type on for extended periods of time. Good job on that front. And it also has a multi-stage backlight, allowing you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. It was good on that front as well. And it has a nice precision touchpad that I thought the size was good and the responsiveness was equally as good. Two finger scrolling, all the gestures work as advertised. Very responsive, very good on that front as well. 
Okay, let's talk performance, and this is running the Intel Core i7 12700H processor with the RTX 3050 discrete GPU from NVIDIA, and we're seeing excellent single-core and multi-core score performance on this unit, and when you compare it to the 16 Plus that I recently reviewed, very comparable performance, even better in some cases, so very, very impressive indeed, and when we looked at the Cinebench R23, that heavy sustained workload, which accounts for any thermal throttling, it did equally as well. Again, very good on par or even exceeding some of its competition. Very impressive indeed. Not only did it do well in the multi-core, but it did well in the single-core performance of that Cinebench R23. Very good. And when it comes to the Geekbench 5, the single core performance was excellent, as well as the multi-core performance. What the theme is here, ladies and gentlemen, excellent performance overall from this chipset with this discrete GPU. And if you want to do some gaming, even though this is not a dedicated specific gaming laptop, the RTX 3050 discrete GPU definitely helps in that area, giving you some nice graphics performance, allowing you to play some of the more popular titles, get some really nice playable frame rates. Again, depending on which title you use, this will definitely get the job done. So when you're not working, you can get some gaming in. Again, not a dedicated gaming laptop, but definitely playable in terms of the games. That's good. And when I ran the Prime 95 stress test to see if this will thermal throttle under heavy load, I noticed it would reach a core temperature of 98 degrees Celsius and maintain above 90 degrees for the most part throughout, maintaining high clock speed. So it didn't see much thermal throttling, but it did get pretty hot. So that's something to be aware of. But again, performance remained really good. Very little throttling. I like to see that. Now, as far as the surface temperatures are concerned, there was a hot spot on the keyboard, as you see here, and on on the underside, it can get a little bit hot, but never too hot to the touch, never too much for you to use on your lap. So that's something to keep in mind. Surface temperatures were okay. And as far as the performance mode, the fans would kick in. Of course, they are noticeable, but in the other modes, such as the quiet and efficiency modes, you're not going to really hear the fans all that much. Again, it's when you do the heavy load stuff, the performance is when the fans will kick in. Something to be aware of. Now you'll notice the two downward facing speakers here as we have this opened up right now. And they're two two watt speakers and I thought the volume was good, the mids were good, and it filled up the room really nice. There was even some bass. Let's give it a listen from Epidemic Sound. And if you want to save 10% on Epidemic Sound, see the link in the description below. Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Dell Inspiron 14 Plus, the 7420 here in 2022? And I got to say, I'm very impressed with this laptop. I like the fact that they were able to put so much power and really good efficiency in a sense in a 14-inch laptop without breaking the bank. This is going to have a really nice 14-inch 2.2K display. I like the 16 to 10 aspect ratio. I like the strong chassis design, the good port selection, the very impressive performance between the CPU and the GPU, the Thunderbolt 4 port that it has, the fact that it has upgradable RAM, SSD, and Wi-Fi, the crystal clear array mics, the impressive full HD 1080p webcam, the decent stereo speakers, and the respectable battery life that all comes together to make this a definite choice here, especially 14-inch laptop that not only is portable, but packs a punch under the hood. The negatives being it can run hot depending on what you're doing. If you're putting it on maximum load, it will start to heat up. And the fans can get loud under heavy load, which is to keep it cool, of course, and it is expected. And the PCI Gen 3 speeds here on the SSD are not the Gen 4 that we know it does support. So if you want to change it out, you have that option. But don't get me wrong, the Gen 3 speeds are certainly fast enough for anything you're going to throw at it. Just would like to have it with Gen 4 out of the box to make it a little bit more future proof. But there's a lot to like here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to give the Dell Inspiron 14 Plus a 7420, a score of 89%, definitely making it worth your money.
So what do you think about this bad boy? The Inspiron 14 plus 7420. Really nice uh, design here. You got the dark green color, of course. That's the one they're offering here, at least in the United States. I did notice that they, in the press images, there's also a silver one. But I'm really digging this dark green color. We saw it with the 16-inch version, and it's nice to have it here on the 14-inch. This is an all-metal premium design. Very little flex or give in the chassis. Really rock solid. It has a little bit of heft for a 14-inch laptop. That's because is packing some power under the hood. We're looking at the Core i7 12700H. We're also looking at the RTX 3050 discrete GPU. And that screams nice power for a portable laptop, that's for sure. Nice 2.5K display. It's a 14 inch display. It's got nice resolution, good coverage of the color gamut, good color accuracy, as I showed in the video. Very nice for watching movies, Netflix, Amazon, YouTube. It also has pretty decent battery life, especially for something that has the discrete GPU and all that. Of course, uh, we went into the numbers and all that. So what do you think about the Inspiron 14 Plus over its 16-inch sibling? I think this is a more portable option. Of course, if you want more screen real estate, go with the 16 Plus. But if you want something that packs a punch but is also more portable, this may be your ticket. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.